Welcome, we are with James today and his <laughs> super <laughs> unique brat. So uh, obviously it's electric and we need to know everything about it from uh, the day you got it to today, where it drives 100%. You've done, I think, uh, 1,500 miles? 15,000. 15,000 miles? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, tell us everything. How did it start? And then we'll talk more about your company. Awesome. Um, so this brat was our initial build for in the EV space. So we okay. looked at doing Volkswagens and other vehicles and we thought, what is, what's a unique vehicle? My father drove a Subaru Brat. He taught me to drive in a Subaru Brat. I drove a Subaru Brat to high school, some college, you know, so we just decided what better to do than pay homage to my dad, okay. you know, build something very unique, build something that um, we don't think has been done before and also bring back the Brat. I own Flash Drive Motors. We're based uh, right out of Austin, Texas. Um, we do electric conversions on classic cars pre 1980s. Okay. So bring us back to when you bought this and the journey of converting it. Yeah, so we bought this in uh, Amarillo, Texas. We decided we were going to do a Subaru Brat. We started looking, and within about an hour, we found one with, within eight miles. Okay. Um, well, that's lucky. Yeah, how, how very good lucky. or how bad was it? Um, well, it was $800. That tells you a little <laughs> clue, you know, of what condition. And the owner made us take two of them. Okay. He had so this one and then another parts one that he uh, made us take. And they were in a... This one was in fairly decent shape. Okay. The other one was completely unsalvageable. Okay. Um, let's introduce the Brat itself for people that are not okay. familiar yeah. with it. So obviously you have the two seat in the back. Maybe right. tell us exactly why Subaru had to do this. Yeah, so the, that's, a, that's a very unique feature of Subaru Brat is the two seats in the back. Um, actually, if you ask anyone about Subaru Brats, first thing they bring up. Um, the reason these seats are here is because they had um, an import tax on pickup trucks at the time. It was a Japanese or a, the American retaliation for the what was the so the chicken tax for imported chickens to Japan. Okay. So these seats were put in the back, but they actually were mandated to remove them at the dealership. So when they were imported, they're supposed to hit the dealership lot, take the seats out before they sell them. But most didn't. All right. Show us how you fit in it and. Oh yeah. yeah because it's a tiny car. Oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can definitely. It's not a comfortable ride, but it'll get you places. <laughs> you know. You got the little handles you can hold on to. Um, if you're too tall, though, this wow. could be a problem. Yeah, did Ooh. they have seat belts? <laughs> they I mean, did. They yeah. originally had the. Or you could add seat belts to it, so you okay. could ride in the back. All right. So now let's go on the other end yeah. and see the conversion you did. Um, it's it's basically a Japanese El Camino. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, who knows? So there's that's a that's one of those long debates. Well, but uh, I right. to me it's a truck. Let's go through the install. So sure. I see Hyper 9. I see some old school technology relatively to our, uh, the industry and where we're heading with newer systems. So let's go through uh, everything you installed. Absolutely. So we did this uh, about three years ago, and this shows you how fast technology has changed. Um, since we did this, there's been two iterations of the, the uh, charger. That was an Elcon charger. Um, these are pretty much the same. I think I, yeah, we actually still sell exactly that model of DC-DC converter. Yeah. Um, the controller and the motor, they still, these are uh, NetGain Hyper 9 and a SME controller. They still sell a lot of those things. Okay. So they, these are a pretty, still a popular solution. If you were to do a similar conversion on, on another brat, would you go for the same system, especially the Hyper 9, um, having oh, a, yeah. a lighter system? <laughs> um, if I were to do another one of these, I think I'd put two of these motors in here. Okay. <laughs> you know, <that's laughs> um, um, the, the performance is addictive. Okay. You know, we've done a few dual motor cars and it makes me want this one faster now. Would you keep the four wheel drive transmission? Um, if I were to redo this from scratch, yeah. I'd, I'd probably do an all wheel drive from a late model Subaru. We had, were just toying with electric conversion because we were bored during COVID. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we, just, we were just looking for something new to do. We've done yeah. fuel injection swaps. So, the, so we started this. Um, no one had done a Subaru Brat. So there weren't adapters that you could buy for a Subaru Brat. We didn't know, well, actually when we first started, we didn't even know you could put a transmission behind an electric motor. Okay. You know, we were starting totally from scratch, like as far as our knowledge base. Um, we found the EV community very open and welcoming though. We talked to different shops, we talked to local shops, we talked to a uh, you know, guy out of, named Adam Lansing out of Dallas who helped us out a lot. To showed us what components to put together. Okay. What about the Subaru Brat community? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, uh, the Subaru Brat community is a small, tight-knit community that we initially weren't welcome in. Okay. Um, 
But you know, I think they've really warmed up to it. I, one of the main guys in the Subaru Brat Forum, he, uh, I've, we've done some video calls and things like that. He, he seems to really have opened up to the idea. Okay, so there may be in the future, we may see some of the Brats yeah, converted I mean, to electric. Yeah, the Brats are, uh, Brats are a relatively inexpensive vehicle, which means you have a, you know, it's, it's hard to put a lot of money into them. So meaning I don't think we'll see a huge Subaru Brat electric okay. conversion market, yeah. but um, hands down this car versus uh, the gas powered Brat, which it was, yeah. better. Okay. If you were to do one for a customer, what type of budget should they consider uh, including the donor brat for a full conversion? I mean, if any shop will tell you the better condition the car is initially, yeah. the, the right, less expensive yeah. the conversion is going to be. Because you can't just slap an engine in a rusty car yeah. or a motor. <laughs> you, have to, you have to have a solid structure to put the motor into. Okay. And it's also, you're spending some money. You want to make sure you have a good car around it, that's makes it that justifies that money. Okay. Um, you did completely restore this car from, obviously it was an 800 bucks car, oh. so what step did you have oh. to go through to restore it? So we tore the thing completely down, uh, bolt to bolt, completely down, pulled the entire drive chain out of it, suspension out of it, um, interior came out of it, um, just completely, completely just a unibody shell we put up on a lift. Okay. We, st we uh, stripped down the paint. Did all the body work. It had slight rust in some areas we had to fix. Then uh, put a this is my this is actually a factory color Miami blue. So we put that on there. We got these stickers reproduced. Yeah. That so these are the original style stickers for this. And you did respray the car yourself. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we do, you know, uh, probably unwise, but we do paint cars as well as do restorations. So that's something we've talked together before we filmed this. Um, it's hard to commit to painting a car as a business doing conversion, you're better off leaving it to someone else. But you yes. were telling me it takes one year to find someone to actually paint your car. Oh, yeah, the, the backlog on, on good paint jobs now, one to two years, easy. Okay. It's just such a, there are fewer and fewer people doing it. It's like people who work on gas engines, you know, there are fewer and fewer people in this space, especially yeah. they want to do classic cars, they want to do uh, collision oh, repair, okay. you know. Yeah. And, and you say it would cost maybe 10, 15 to $20,000 to like do oh, a yeah. proper job. For a yeah. quality paint yeah. job, they'll yeah. spend that much money. Okay. There's a, there's 200 hours in a paint job. Okay. So we haven't talked about the battery pack um, mm -hmm. or the battery modules. Uh, what did you choose to use? So they are, uh, there are five Tesla, uh, the 6.3 kilowatt hour from uh, like a P100 okay. in here. Uh, they're all located under, you've got a battery pack here, one right here, and then Subaru had this interesting empty area here that I have no idea why it's there, but it fit two Tesla modules. Maybe that's why they put it there. Okay. Fit two Tesla modules. <laughs> so in so. you back in the days, yeah, right. we would need that. Yeah. Uh, again, if you were to do the, the same conversion, would you opt for um, Tesla modules or? Uh, actually, it fit they okay? work very well in this yeah. car. Yeah, okay. yeah. Tesla modules. Tesla modules are a pretty well designed module. You can use them in just about anything. I mean. We have other batteries we use, but I think this particular car, yeah, we'd stick with them. Okay. Now let's talk a bit more about the, the company, Flash Drive. Uh -huh. uh, tell us what you do, how you started. You come from the ice yes. age. <laughs> you were a, <laughs> like a regular garage, age. and then yeah. you completely shifted your your business model. Oh yeah, we were doing fuel injection swaps and, um, you know, the Coyote type of swap, LS engines, snipers, you know, we're doing those things and then, um, yeah, you warranty on those. You know, they'll 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 shake. They'll they'll make noises, things like that. Exhaust pipes will rattle, and really, you just get tired of uh, how much after work a gas engine is. Yeah. Electric conversions leave and they don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, which deal. is very important because I I know you need to ship a car very far from the U.S. Yes. So you really don't want any after sales service. Oh on it yeah. Yet. Anything we can't fix remotely. Right? So we do install diagnostic modules in here that we can get codes and 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 actually every fix we've had to make so far we've been able to push just either over the air through customer hands. Okay. This is a. It is still a small place, yeah. you know, and there's still a lot of shops. And because of that, because of now, it's everyone gets along really well. Yeah. Because we we aren't we aren't we aren't in a direct infighting and in, in direct competition yet. We all have our niches we're trying to carve out. So it it does breed a a, a yeah cooperation that you don't see in some of the other other auto markets. How big is the team? Uh, right now it's four and five. It kind of varies between that. Okay. Because some some of our help is a little more part time. How hard is it to find technician to work with you and join the team? You know, um, because we're not looking for your typical mechanic. Very hard. Okay. Um, 
we tend to focus more on troubleshooting experts okay. than straight up mechanics. Even more so than people with EV skills. Like we really want to, we, we do a lot of like drilling in to see how someone handles adversity. Cause that's, these are chock full of it. Okay, are you iring right now? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. So we are, yeah, and that's it. It's, it's said that we, we look, like I said, we look at mechanics but we also look at people who are IT. I could say actually right now, the majority of our staff, IT people, okay. not even mechanics. My brother and I are, we've been lifelong mechanics as, long, as well as IT. So we kind of blend those two things, but we feel like we've been able to mold these uh, more computer savvy people into mechanical work. Talking about your brother, you have a very fun show. Well, I don't know if you call it a show, but uh, YouTube <laughs> videos. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe plug in, uh, oh, yeah. plug, plug your channel. So my brother's channel is Disrepair, D-I-S-S -S, Repair. And it's it's more than just EVs, but we have a lot of a flash drive stuff on there. Okay. Uh -huh. He's been, <laughs> oh yeah, he's, yeah. he he is a, he is a uh, ice engine lover. He loves the vibration, loves the noise, but he loves this too. So it kind of shows it's like you don't have, there's this false dichotomy we've created where you either like EVs or you like gas engines. It's, it's, it is, it's like it's false. Yeah. You don't have to like one or the other. No, no, no. And most of us come from the big V8 yeah. world and we transition. Um, so now it's just a matter of, you know, sharing the information and yeah. putting well, it's a people lot of it's in seats. Yeah. It's still a car. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, honestly, especially with a conversion like this, that we put a motor in front of a transmission, the only thing different is the motor. Yeah. Everything behind that's traditional mechanical systems. Uh, and people saying we are ruining cars, uh, they should take this as an example, because <laughs> this would have never been saved if you didn't buy it to uh, convert it to electric. Oh, no. Yeah. And you know, it, when you say ruining, I mean, I always kind of say uh, if by ruining it, we put the car back on the road to yeah. where it can be driven and, um, and enjoyed, then yeah, we ruin the car. Yeah. <laughs> um, we haven't um, checked out the interior. I know oh, you yeah. have a... Let's get that. Yeah, let's uh, open the door. There you go. So it still looks fairly standard. But yeah. you have everything working as before. That's a big deal to us. Um, so the thing is, is like we are trying to bridge this gap between you know the ICE people and the EV people. And we realized that um, one of the things that stood out to us in some of the OEM EVs is they have these big tablets in there and they yeah. look very EV. Yeah. But we're thinking, what if we could make them not look EV? What if inside, when the interior, other than the little display in there, which is optional, you don't even need the display, without, without that little display there, you just have functional gauges. I mean, there's really not any real difference in driving this other than you just don't hear uh, the yeah. engine noise. Do you think it's just as much work to convert uh, the dashboard into that to, to work as it was, or would it be easier actually to use a tablet system? Oh, uh, you know, we've designed in-house a, a gauge driver. It's real easy okay. now. Okay. It, it has a Bluetooth app. You, 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 once you plug in the module and you plugged it into the, it's got wires you just plug into the temp fuel uh, in check engine light and tachometer. Once you set that, you have a little deal. You adjust the up and down arrows until the needle is in the right places. Yeah. And to calibrate it, and you hit set and it just works. I mean, okay. I mean, as far as us installing it, no, the initial development was hard, but now it's just a plug and play. All right. We also put a Bluetooth module in that, um, that does run a tablet too. So we have the little display, but we also have a, the same Bluetooth module. We'll, we have an app that you can uh, monitor all the vitals on too. Perfect. Uh, let's, um, let's see the charge port that yeah. you used the original. So this is another thing. There. It's like, where else would you put a charge port yeah. than in the, where the, uh, used to fill it up. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually uh, we we use a hashtag uh, hashtag show me your charge charge port because it's like this is such a common EV picture, right? Like yeah. everybody everybody always takes a picture of their charging port plugged in. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you very much. I think now we're going to take it for a spin real quick. Sure. Yeah. See how it drives and yeah. Let's, let's go. go. You see, you have off-road tires right yeah. now, and you're going to replace them with more traditional tires. Like yeah. That's you can hear the uh, you can hear the off-road tires yeah. on it in the parking lot. The uh, <laughs> Yeah, we had radials on there before, and it would smoke the little tires off. Um, it definitely, uh, it definitely changed its ride characteristics, but it also kind of looks cool. So it's hard to, uh, you know, it's it's trade off for everything. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm gonna, go ahead. How fast uh, that this, this goes? Is it um, just as fast as original? Oh, it's much faster. Uh, okay. I, I actually, we asked the Subaru Brat forum what the original zero to sixty time was, yeah. and they said still waiting. <laughs> You know, um, it'll run a nine second yeah. zero to 60, which is pretty respectable for a Subaru Brat. All right. 
So it might be the fastest or the quickest Subaru Brat. <laughs> well, yeah. there's a guy with an LS engine in one. I think okay. that'll probably beat us by quite a bit. But, but I could give you a little, I'll, I'll do a little just, we won't do a okay. hardcore burnout, but we'll do a, I'll just kind of demonstrate. It still has four wheel drive. Okay. So I'll put it in four wheel drive and just do a little takeoff. All right, let's do Ready? this. Ready? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's quick. <laughs> That's probably quicker than you want the Brat to go. Yeah. Are, you, are you still on the original brakes? Uh, yes, but it had disc. These were okay. uh, this is a 1980. Okay. Um, so it had front disc brakes, and it it actually has power brakes. We have a little vacuum pump oh. that does that. Actually, we use a, a like a the the rotary vane pump. That's okay. why you don't yep. hear it. You know, a lot yeah. of those you hear. Brrr, this one we uh, yeah put a quiet one. All right. What well, don't you drop me off, and yep. uh, we, you do another pull so we can see okay. it from the outside. Okay. Do you want All right, that was very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, did, it, did the wrong wheel spin? Yeah. Do you need <laughs> this one? All right, very good. Uh, yeah. Last so word. So I'll still spin these off-road tires. <laughs> <laughs> so any last word and uh, maybe mention the website. Uh, our website? Yeah, you Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we uh, we put all of our builds on Instagram, YouTube videos. Um, you can check us out at www.flashdrivemotors.com. All right, thank you very much. Thanks.